Hello everyone, this is an Excel uh, demonstration in supply chain management on the homework and logistics. And I just plan on just working the quantitative part of the homework and uh, just show how to set it up uh, so that you can finish it uh, and you can pretty much follow what I want to do. And the important thing here is to understand uh, uh, the implications of these homework assignments to supply chains. So let's bring up the, uh, the homework assignment, uh, the quantitative parts. So let's bring up the first one. Now the first question here, um, question three, a distribution company is planning a cargo shipment of agricultural commodities from Los Angeles to Shanghai. The cargo ship has three cargo holds where more than one type of commodity can be placed in the same cargo hold. However, because of balance considerations, weight restrictions for the cargo holds are required and uh, the following information was obtained. So first, we have the amount to be shipped of each of these in tons. Uh, here's the profit per ton. And then down here are the requirements. Now these requirements are the maximum weight allowed per cargo hold in tons. And then the forward, forward hold has requirements. And the center hold has requirements. So let me just work through this. And, um, and actually before I get started, if you go to... Um, uh, the uh, my website mdharper.com which uh, hopefully everyone has done before under supply chain management coming down here uh, we see the uh, LP transportation part one Excel transportation part two you know that th this is a very good starting point now these quantitative problems in the homework are a little bit different uh, but uh, they're very similar but they're they're not the same but they're similar so let's work this out, okay? So let's uh, bring this down, and let's bring up let's bring up Excel. Okay, here's Excel. Let's uh, bring this down. Okay, first let's copy everything over. Okay, first let's take this, Control C, and copy it. We'll come down a little bit. Copy it there. And then we'll copy the requirements here. Control C, up like this, and put that right here. Boom. And uh, let's uh, make these bigger so that we can format this a little bit. Boom, there you go. And then let's uh, format the rows. And then we format the columns. And let's see if we did it here. Yeah, it's pretty good. So let's um, reduce this down to, say, 2. And do we have everything here? That looks pretty good to me. Uh, that's fine. OK. So let's, uh, let's uh, do this thing. Why isn't this one lower? OK. Um, Let's see if we can make this smaller. That's better for some reason. Okay. There we go. That's good. Okay, now then, uh, let's get this started here. First, I'm going to bring uh, this information down. Okay, this is amount to be shipped. Uh, I'll keep it up here, but let's bring this down. Control C, paste this thing. Okay, there we go. So this is how much you're going to be is going to be shipped. But if you recall, uh, let's make this bigger. Uh, we have three different holds. We're going to have a forward hold. We're going to have a center, um, and then we're going to have a rear. And so we have three different locations where this can be um, uh, shipped in. Let's make this smaller. Let's see. Ah, that's good enough. We can change it later if we need to. Okay, so this right here is going to be, let's go ahead and box this in, and let's shade it in. 
because these are going to be our decision variables. This is what we're going to be changing to know what's going to be shipped. Okay. And uh, so at, when we go through this, uh, what will be shipped? Uh, let's see. Let's bring this over. Amount to be shipped is going to be this. Oops. Let me bring it up here. There we go. That's how much we're going to ship. Okay. And then, um, well, let's bring this over again. And then the amount that is shipped. That's going to be the sum of each of these. Here's how much we're shipping. Okay. Um, this is what we're shipping. This is to be shipped. And so this is the first constraint we're going to have to make sure that what we ship doesn't exceed uh, what we have to ship because you can't ship something that's not there. Okay, let's uh, bring this down to um, Arial. Ten and center, center this. There we go. Okay, so here we go. We have this, and here's our commodities. And let's just bring this over here. One, two, three, four is our commodities. Okay. Uh, and then we have, this is how much we're shipping for the commodities. And so here's how much uh, the shipped per hold equals the sum. This is how much is going to be shipped in the forward hold, the center hold, and the rear hold. And then this is the total. And this is in the in the whole uh, cargo, the whole total cargo. Okay, let's box that in. Okay, there we go. So there's uh, there's some values here, and let's uh, go ahead and uh, none here, except for this. There we go. So we start with this, and so what we ship is going to be this is how much we're shipping. Uh, here's this, this, what we're shipped cannot exceed the amount to be shipped. Here's the hold. Oh, and then we have a maximum weight per hold of 2,000. So let's put these in 2,500 and 3,000. Or, sorry, 2,000, 5,000, and 3,000. And these are the max per hold. Okay, so there's a maximum weight allowed per cargo hold in tons. So the forward has a max, center has a max. So whatever the total uh, in the hold is, let's say total hold that's shipped, and this represents the total commodity. That's going to be shipped. Uh, so these have to be less than this. So this is one constraint. Okay. Let's make sure we don't miss those. This is another constraint. We don't want to miss that one. So that's this one. And now we have a forward constraint and a center constraint. So let's take the forward constraint first. Uh, let's bring this down here and um, let's put it right here. Control V and paste it and, and there it is. Uh, okay. That's kind of... Let's take it back and put it down here. It's kind of a lot. Anyway, uh, so the weight, here we go. The weight shipped, actually let me take this off. The weight shipped in forward cargo hold must hold, must be within 10% of the weight in the rear. Oh, okay. So the forward max within 10% of the rear here is going to equal, the max is going to be 1.1 times uh, the rear. And there that is. And the minimum equals 90% of the rear. Okay, and so those are the uh, the constraints. 
there's the constraint on the max for the forward and there's the max and min for the for the forward okay very good okay so let's bring this down again oops and now let's take uh, the center now we have a center let's take the center copy it and bring it in here paste it so here comes the center hold the uh, ding ding ding. Whoops. Cancel. There we go. Bing bing bing. Move this up. Now we have the center requirements. And it's going to be a max and center min. Okay, let's see what it says here. The weight shipped in the center cargo hold must be between 40% and 60% of the total weight shipped. Oh, okay. So here's the center right here. 40%, well, the max is going to be 60%, whoops, equals 60% times the total, which is this right here. And then the, um, the minimum equals 40% of the total. So make sure we have this right. This is 10%, 90%, 60%, 40%. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good to me. Okay. So we don't need this anymore. Okay. Now, uh, now then, um, I think that's all of our constraints. Now the cost. Okay. Now we want to maximize our profit. Uh, tell you what let's do. Let's come back here and say... Um, What's the maximum profit for the shipment that satisfies all the information? So we want to maximize our profit, so we need to get the profit. So down here is a profit uh, equals, I'm going to use a sum product because it's more efficient. I want all of these F4 to fix, comma, everything that the forward hold is shipping. Okay. Boom. And then I'm going to copy that over. Ka-ching, ka-ching. And so then, let's take the total here. And this is the total profit. And this is total profit. And so let's uh, highlight this. And let's shade that. Because this is going to be our objective function. And here's our constraints in here. That's a constraint. This is a constraint. This is a constraint, bingo. This is a constraint, bingo. And uh, here's my objective function, and there's my decision variables. Okay, so how do we solve this thing? We go to solver, data, solver. Okay, let's reset everything. Okay, now then, let's see here. Uh, our objective function is going to be this, and right there. Uh, and then we want to maximize it. By changing variables, we want to change all of these here. Okay. Now we want to add our constraints. Well, the first constraint is everything that's being shipped must be less than or equal to the tons to be shipped because you can't ship what you don't have. Okay. And then you want to add this again. Uh, and every th the total weight in the holds must be less than or equal to its max. And so there that is. Okay. Okay, we add another constraint. Uh, here we go. The forward hold. So what the forward hold is, is less than or equal to the max. Add. The forward hold is greater than or equal to the min. Add. The center is less than or equal to the max. Add. And the center is greater than or equal to the min. Okay. And I think that's all it is right here. We'll make this a simplex algorithm. And then, boom, press solve. Okay, and that's, that's going to be the answer. Now, I don't want to solve this. for. I'll let you finish it off. But what I will do is uh, let's solve it, but let's change some of these numbers around. Okay. Like 65, uh, 40... Uh, 68 and uh, 72 
and then let's change let's change these over here to 4750 2600 uh, 12 20 and 1560 uh, and let's keep everything else the same and let's now let's solve it again solve it it found a solution you see it says solver found a solution and I'll say okay and there's the problem well I changed the numbers around and so if um, uh, if you had the right numbers in here then that's how you solve the problem okay okay uh, well I just, I just want to go through this one how to set it up how to solve it and hopefully after that then you can solve the problem and that is question three the quantitative part and four from from the solution uh, for part two now let's go to the next one so now for part three question five uh, now this is where the uh, and the uh, supply chain analytics I mean the uh, the video and also commodity both this video here video four video five primary value four video four will help with uh, this and also the Excel spreadsheet this will also help but let me just solve it here from scratch an inter international distribution company of containers with corporate offices in Manila has been expanding operations that service custom customers between Asian continent and the North American continent over the past four years. Leanne Abel, a VP of Logistics, has called a planning meeting to discuss possible modifications to shipping schedules because of recent changes in operations. The initial motivation for the meeting is increases in the unit shipping costs due to a series of monetary adjustments within the different destinations. Sound familiar? Uh, the unit cost of shipping from each source warehouse <clears throat> there's two of them uh, to <coughs> um, to each destination site capacity in thousands of the warehouses and the demand in thousands of the destination sites are given the table so this these are the cost unit cost per thousand uh, here's the capacity uh, of uh, each of these warehouses the sources here's the demand destination to be received okay and then what's the uh, what is the total cost of the optimal shipping plan in other words what's the minimum cost plan we want to minimize the cost okay okay let's reduce this a little bit uh, and oh here's Excel we already have it here So let's take Excel, let's take these values here, actually let's do this, uh, and let's take all of these like this. There we go. Control C and copy this, and now let's minimize it, and then maximize this and bring it here, and then Control V and paste it, and there it is. So we want to solve this thing, and again the video uh, and the Excel will help with this. And so let's take this again. Control C and we'll paste the values here and we'll paste the values here. But now let's bring this back down to uh, to Arial and then 10 and then center everything. Okay, now let's uh, zero this out. Okay, uh, now the capacity here is what's being shipped. And over here, this is about what's being received. Okay. And over here, that's total shipped. Uh, let's just do this. Okay. So this is going to be the sum of everything that Los Angeles will ship to the three destination sites. So I'm summing that. And I'm summing it for Vancouver as well. Okay. And then whatever Tokyo receives is coming from either Los Angeles or Vancouver. So let's sum that and copy that over. Okay. So this is how much received. This is how much is shipped. Now this cell here, uh, as I said in the video, this equals the cost. This is the total cost. And that equals the sum 
product of all of the unit costs, comma, times the shipping schedule. This is everything that's going to be shipped. Okay, so if I look at this, you see here, it's all of these times these. So these cells represent how much is being shipped from this source to this destination. Uh, that's how much is going to be shipped. Okay. There we go. Okay. So to solve this thing, we go to data, we go to solver, um, we reset everything because, okay, now then, the objective function here is a total cost. We want to minimize it by changing these cells right here. There they are. Uh, now we want to add constraints. Well, the constraints are uh, everything you ship must be less than or equal to your capacity because you can't ship more than you have. <laughs> and then you add a second con constraint where everything that's being received, you want that to be greater than or equal to the demand. Now, we could say equal to demand, to, you know, I that's... But greater than or equal to, then you're going to minimize cost, so it'll 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 be exactly the demand because that'll minimize your cost. I say greater than or equal to just to be complete, because sometimes you'll add other constraints into here, and sometimes you will ship more than you need to to minimize cost. Uh, and uh, we will, we don't have those kind of problems in this course right now, but they, we certainly could. Okay, and I say okay. Uh, there is my solution. I make this uh, simplex and then solve it. I'll let you solve it to satisfy this. Now, I kind of want to do this um, because if I sum the capacity up here, oops, if I sum the capacity here, we have a total of 1,600. If I sum the demand, then I have a total of 1440. So the difference, this minus this, means that 160 will not be shipped. Don't know where that is, but somewhere, 160 will not be shipped. And we'll see where it's going to be. But I'm not going to do this here. I'm going to change these numbers around because I'll let you solve it, but I want to show you what it looks like. So let me just change the numbers a little bit. So let me make this 44, and this is 45. This is 42, and this is 41, this is 46, and this is 42. Oh, that's a 45, let's say. Okay, let's make this, let's make this 850, and this is 720. Okay, let's make this 450, 440, and 530. Okay, uh, 580. So there's a hundred different, there's a hundreds difference. Okay, now let's solve it. Solve it, boom, found a solution. See, solver found a solution, okay. It's, that's what the cost is gonna be. And notice Tokyo has zero. Los Angeles only ships to Shanghai and Hong Kong, and uh, 200 to Shanghai, 580 to Hong Kong. Vancouver ships nothing to Hong Kong, but 450 to Tokyo, 170 to Shanghai. Uh, and that's the solution to that. And so if we bring, oops, if we bring back up uh, the uh, problem again, uh, what is the total cost in the optimal length? If the capacity of Vancouver is increased by 10%, then what's the total cost in the optimal shipping plans? Well, it's going to be the same, isn't it? Not necessarily. So let's bring this back down. And right now we have... I'll tell you what let's do. Let's make this uh, 750. Okay. Uh, let's let's make this 700. And then solve it again. Now 10% more, 10% of 700 is um, 770. All right, 10% of 770. And so, so let's take this, let's copy this and just bring it over here. Okay, whoops. Okay, 
Uh, now, if we make this higher, like 770, and then solve it again, then you say, oh, well, you know, you have more, more capacity than you need, no problem. Uh, you're going to have the same answer. Not necessarily. Let's solve this thing. Boom, boom. And it turned out to be, as yes, it is going to be the same. Uh, not always. Put it that way, not always. Uh, unfortunately, I messed these things. Well, put it this way. I have these numbers such that it will not be the same. Put it that way. There's, there is going to be a difference here. Okay, the cost is going to be a little bit different. So, that's going to be, uh, that's how you solve question five. So let's go on to the next one. Now, question seven, two, agricult two agricultural suppliers ship weekly to three regional warehouses, which distribute to three local retailers. The suppliers ship in response to the retailer demand, where the warehouses merely transfer the inbound inventory to outbound deliveries and thus carry no inventory. The weekly production of the suppliers, which is referred to as manufacturers here, and the weekly demand of the retailers, which are retailers here, are given. The unit shipping costs from each supplier to each warehouse are given, and the unit shipping costs from each warehouse to each retailer are given. So these are the costs from manufacturer to warehouse and warehouse to re retailer. And so uh, the question is, what's the minimum total shipping cost that satisfies all these requirements? Okay, so let's solve this one. Uh, first, let's take all of this and um, uh, control C and copy this. Control C. And let's open up uh, Excel again. Uh, there we go. And let's come down to here and let's control V and paste this thing. Uh, again, let's make it Arial because I like Arial. Uh, let's make it here. Uh, and let's. Um, Let's increase this, format these a little bit here. Uh, and uh, there's probably a better way to do this, but this is kind of what I do. Uh, and then take the, uh, the rows and format them. And that makes them, then these, I format these. Let me use over, there we go. Then come back over here, format these. There we go. That way, we make them fit. <laughs> okay, we make them fit. Okay, good. Uh, let's see here. Okay, now then, we know that we have the manufacturers shipping to the warehouses, and then the warehouses shipping to the retailers. Okay, fine. So let's... Um, Let's go ahead and use this. Uh, let's take these right here, copy them, and then down here, uh, let's see here. Let's put them down here, and let's paste them. But then let's take these out and take these out, because what we want to do is to um, these are, going to our, these are going to be our decision variables. This is what we're going to be changing. Let's go ahead and do this. And let's shade this. Uh, and then here is going to be, because really what we're doing is shipping uh, from manufacturer to warehouse and then warehouse to retailer. That's pretty much what we're doing here. Okay. Uh, but then the manufacturer here, uh, what they are going, the production here, is going to equal the sum uh, from each that's going to be each one of those. Copy that down. Okay. Uh, and then let's bring this down one. And then the whatever they produce, they're going to ship to the warehouses. So this is really inbound to the warehouses. So let's sum each of these columns and copy those over. Oops, I missed the plus. There we go. Up, oh, did it again. Boom, boom. Okay, so this is the inbound to the warehouses. Okay, now whatever inbound to the warehouses, 
those warehouses are shipping to the retailers. And so this represents the outbound, okay, which is going to be the sum uh, of every one of these will be the outbound from that retailer and copy that down. And then here, this is what is being received by each of the retailers. So now we pretty much astute, uh, we have one, two, three stages. Retailer, warehouse, uh, I mean, manufacturer, uh, warehouse, retail. We have a three stage uh, uh, supply chain. Okay, so that's the logistics of the material. Now we want to, if you recall, what we want to do is to um, minimum total cost. Okay, uh, so let's make this right here. Let's shade this because this is going to be the total cost equal uh, the sum product of the first leg, which is going to be these costs, comma, the this shipping schedule, those are items that are being shipped from the manufacturer to the warehouse. Then we're going to add the sum product of the second leg of these warehouses unit costs, comma, shipped from the warehouses to the retailer, the, 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 the next, uh, the second leg. Boom. Ah, uh, there's a cost, zero. Okay, now then, so let's see here. So here's the problem right here. Okay, now we're going to solve it with Excel, uh, with Solver. Click Solver, uh, let's reset all, okay. Don't want to get things messed up. Okay, now the objective function is going to be this right here, and we want to minimize it by changing variables. First, we want to change these, how much is shipped from manufacturer to warehouse, comma, and now we want to change those. Okay, now let's add some constraints. Okay, the first constraint then is going to be, let's see here. Okay, the first constraint is the production. Everything that's being produced must be less than or equal to its weekly production because you can't have more. This is like outbound manufacturing to the warehouse. This is the production. It can't be more than their weekly production. Okay, we add uh, then the inbound to the warehouses, okay, uh, must be equal to the outbound of the warehouses that are coming into uh, the retailers. Okay, uh, and then what is being received in the retailers must either equal or greater than or equal to the actual retail to demand up here. Okay, so I think I have everything I need that looks good right here. Do the simplex algorithm and solve it. I'll let you do that. But I want to see if I did it right. So uh, let me uh, uh, close this out. Let me change these numbers around and see what happens. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, the 150 and 250, 2, 3, 400. And then these two, uh, 300. Uh, this is 380. That's fine. Oh, I, I shouldn't do that. I should the sum because I'm going to be changing these of those two. And that equals the sum of these three. I want to make sure that what we're producing here and what our demand is, make sure that our demand doesn't exceed what we're producing. If so, then we have an infeasible LP. It's, it, it can't be solved. Uh, and we'd have to add, we'd have to do some manipulations, which is beyond this course. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let's change this. I know, let's change this to 110, 100, 160, and over here, let's make this 180 and 240. So we have more than enough. That's nice. We could change some of these too. Uh, let's change uh, 16, 11, 12, nah, let's do that, 14, 
and this is 15, 12, and then 14. Okay, and then let's make this uh, 15, 18, and 12. And this is 19, um, 16, and 14. And this is 21, 22, and 19. That's good enough. Okay, now let's solve this thing. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't make it infeasible or something. Solve this thing. Yay! Solver found a solution. Okay. And if these numbers were part of the problem, then the answer is $10,740. Okay. And uh, so let's go back to... Um, whoops. Let's go back. Let's take that. Bring that back. Let's go back to the problem here. Uh, demand for which retailer was not met. Okay. So you can look at that to see and just interpret it. Anyway, uh, I'm pretty sure, if I remember right, that one of these numbers is the right number, but you have to get the um, you have to get the right values in here to get the right answer. But that's how you do it. That, that's how you solve it. Okay, that's how you solve it. So I hope this helps. This is just an Excel demonstration on the homework to help you uh, get there. So um, that's all I have for this. So take care.